Hello everyone and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom and its alpha experience where we are currently relaxing with our free range dinos and admiring their toesies. <laughs> Look at these you guys! I have literally never looked so hard at different type of animal feet as I have in the past couple days of actually playing this alpha. <gasps> She's wearing a shirt that has the adorable little design! Oh my word, I love that so much. And not just because I'm obsessed with sauropods. I'm actually really sad that there's no long necks in the lineup of the dinosaurs that we can actually work with in the alpha because they are one of my favorite of all of the dino like families, I guess you would call it. Kind Kind of like in modern era, I love birds. I probably would love prehistoric birds as well. <gasps> Which reminds me, okay, you guys. So there are going to be like micro raptors and smaller animals. We're not just going to go big, big, big for the dinos. And let me see if I can find, I think it was under guest facilities, maybe. Visitor tunnel, information kiosk, a restroom, clothing store, family restroom. I did see that somewhere in here, was it park? That's park. The animal nursery, power plant, the wind turbine, the solar panel. I know somewhere around here I happen to see. Well, there's a bunch of beautiful shrubbery. Also, apparently we can like change. Oh, left shift to change height. Yes, that that does indeed change the height of our flowers, but it doesn't actually um, <laughs> doesn't actually change their height. All right, let's go ahead and move those guys out of the way for now. But I know somewhere around here, I swear when we were putting down like the, the, oh, here we go, here we go, enclosures, mini aviary. When we were putting down the fences, that's where the answer was. We actually have these mini aviaries. So let's put this mini aviary down and I want to see, can we do anything with it? It is indeed, <gasps> Microraptor! Yes! We can indeed make some micro raptors. I am so happy right now. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. We want to do like high quality feed for them. I wish we could decorate the inside of their exhibit. We can make some male and female different micro raptors. Temperature, environment, styling. So we can do like a modern set. Oh, let's make it green. Or blue. Hey, some blues would actually be pretty nice. Okay. I don't know what we're changing blue and what we're changing the colors on but we're changing the colors on something so good to know that you'll be able to kind of like customize and decorate this i love the sign do not feed the animals like seriously they probably need a very strict diet this is probably more important than like don't feed the koalas don't feed your prehistoric animals at your prehistoric zoo that you go to because they probably really need a specialized diet or spoilers they could just like really love bananas that would be really a bit of a head twister wouldn't it if like you got a tyrannosaurus rex and it's roaming around which it'll be doing here in our free range zone pretty soon uh and then it turns out that like <laughs> The T-Rex happens to really adore bananas. That would be a big twist of fate. Like, you would think that maybe it wouldn't adore bananas, but my dog, Oliver, we had a rescued Great Dane, Brindle Great Dane growing up. He only had one eye because he got in a fight with a raccoon in the Ozark Mountains. Um, but he loved bananas, and you wouldn't look at a canine and say, yes, that species will love bananas. So maybe you could end up with a T-Rex who really loves bananas. Maybe we should add a T-Rex who loves bananas in honor of this idea to zoo crafting. I'm just saying, just saying. But all right, let's go ahead and I want some female micro raptors. We're gonna get like a few of them. I hope, I hope, I hope we can we can have them. Um, and then let's breed some male micro raptors. And then are they in here? Oh, <gasps> you guys! Oh my gosh, yes! This is everything I have ever wanted in my life. Look how cute they are! Oh, they are making me miss our little micro raptors we had in zoo crafting too. And look at the way they're sticking to the sides. That's so cool. Hi, buddy. Oh my gosh. This one's sleeping. Look at the way it's tucked its wings. Oh yeah, this is going to be so much fun. We finally have some feathers on our little flying dinosaurs here. I never know if these would be t considered like reptiles or not. Oh, look at those tail feathers. Look at the sheen on their beautiful feathering. The colors are just fantastic. Yes, this, I'm absolutely living for this. I cannot wait to be able to decorate in here. <gasps> just look at those movements. I am in love. I am so in love. Oh, wow. 
Everything about you is just stunning and fulfills my dreams. We we have a new favorite. We have a new favorite animal I'm going to be researching and learning about. Absolutely. I just oh, chips, my husband chips would freak for these because the way their their movements. I wonder what in fact, I wish I could ask the 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 devs behind prehistoric kingdom what animals did they study and watch videos of to really start constructing an idea of how the micro raptors would move and behave because a lot of the sideways movement actually reminds me a lot of the way woodpeckers go up and down the trees or sugar gliders it reminds me a ton about sugar gliders so did they watch like lots of videos on sugar gliders to start getting the idea of the movements for the animations? This curious mind really wants to know. And that hopping gesture and movement, totally reminiscent. Oh, look at that. Totally reminiscent of watching like a robin jump around. That is so cool. Can I fill their place with plants if I do it like modularly? <gasps> you totally can. Okay. Today's objective, micro raptors. Oh my gosh, you can just like get right up in their area. I, I've never actually done this with, well, I think I've done it a couple times with our um, our micro or our small exhibits that we have in Planet Zoo. But now I'm feeling really encouraged to like get in and try to micromanage them and make them look even better. Oh, this looks fantastic. I love it. Can I put down little, oh, you can put in little ferns. And just let them go hopping and popping through the ferns. Okay, let's see. Rotate. Change height. Yes, yes, yes. Advanced edit. Well, scaling. What if... Oh! You can actually change even the size and the height of the plants. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That legitimately blew my mind forever. I, I can't believe that. And then once you put it down, like, okay, I'm good to go there. And then what if I want to duplicate exactly? Oh my goodness. K-Bug tree, where are you? We need, we need the big honking tree, guys. All right, where's my big honker? All right, all right, we'll come over. Okay, here's my big honker tree. I just had like the biggest epiphany of an idea. I guess, oh wait, we're editing a modular group. No, 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 I don't want to be editing the modular group anymore. I want, oh, that tree, I wonder if I can't, like, okay, maybe I can't click on that tree right now. All right, so let's go to this K-Pok tree. And we're going to try this honk and chonker thing out. So what if I <laughs> want to actually change? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know... I know I'm supposed to be obsessed about all of the animals, but you guys, like, this is the best editing I have ever had on any type of plant ever. That is going to provide such a freaking dynamic way that you can work with your environment. My mind is blown. One of you guys told me in the comments a couple days ago that you could actually modularly change like the size of these things and it just didn't click for some reason. Now it's clicking. Now it's clicking. And I am extremely happy with this. I mean, look, I, I've seen some people say like, oh, it's just like a ripoff of Jurassic World Evolution. Ironically, I think they've been working on this since before Jurassic World Evolution even came out. Um, gosh, yeah. They, they really started kicking this off when I had finished up like our biggest run of zoo crafting. Hopefully we're just getting ready to start the bigger one. But anyway... Um, I really feel like that's not quite the case because there are so many quality of life changes I've already seen with like how you can put down the plants, with a lot of how you can manipulate the pathing. There are very, very intelligent decisions behind the actual design of the game that's underneath the, the animals, that's underneath how pretty it looks. It looks pretty, but then below that there is so much thoughtfulness 
for different changes in the design of the game that I feel are already, just in this alpha, pushing the bar up for what these tycoons should offer, for what these kinds of like sandbox zoo building experiences, be it dinosaurs or animals, should offer. And being able to resize your plants like that is actually one of them. That is amazingly cool. You're not just changing the position of them, you just straight up changed like everything about them. And now we have a gigantic tree of life towering over this whole area. So yes, I totally understand the concern because there's so many games out there that you could really play and enjoy, but you're kind of like, yeah, this is just kind of like a reskin of this other game in the genre. You see that a lot with the farming games right now, um, which is why I was so excited for Roots of Pacha because it actually seems to shift that genre as well. But you see that a ton because now like the slice of life farming games are all over Steam, right? And not all of them are good because they just take the things that you've always done and kind of just put a different color on them. They don't really change any fundamental mechanic. I'm already getting the fundamental mechanic and the level of expectation I have from all of my Tycoon games shifting up from this and I love it. All right, and let's actually move our giant honker tree of life. Oh, like what? What? I'm in shock. You mean I can actually put things all the way out there? I could make really fancy creations and just stick them out into the netherworld off of the boundary map? This is another one of those things that like, heck or high water, I don't have to build an exhibit out here, but if I can at least put some of my decorations out here to really make this world even more personalized and immersive, then I totally want to do that. And also, if this is like a new group, split from group, that is just so cool. I, I really, really love this. And then can I like name this the tree of life? And then you can just straight up name it like that, like I like to do in a planet zoo to like name things after you guys. Okay, that also being able to move things that are just decorative, like outside of the boundary, I can totally accept if people, animals and habitats can't go outside the boundary. But if I can stick a freaking tree outside the boundary and then just like decorate the hillsides with trees of life, I actually can right off into the vast distances. Y'all, I'm telling you, these are the kinds of little quality of life upgrades like, I, I now can see into the distance the beautiful trees. Those are the kinds of little things that just make me feel like this is a genre mover. Maybe, like, not... I'm, I'm withholding comment on if it's going to be, like, a complete genre reshaper. But already, my expectations of what could be done have shifted. Anyway, now that I have freaked out about plants... <laughs> Once again, and had quite an exciting time. Oh, we've got some ivy I could put in here too. Okay, let's see. Can I actually do a line to surface with the ivy? And then get the ivy on the walls. Not really, unfortunately. Uh, oh, here's our bromeliads. Oh, we could get bromeliads in their little trees. Or what about these vines? Oh, so cute. Okay, so let's see. I want to change the height. Oh, that's so easy. There we go. So if I want to just get some like vines tucked in here and then tilt them a little bit for my micro raptors to be able to climb on. Here's a huge vine. Now we're just changing the size of the vines. <laughs> I love the sound of the micro raptors too. All right. And then I'm just going to hang that from the top and move it a little bit. There we go. There you go, guys. You've got some big giant like vines now. That is so cool. We could like cover their place in bromeliads if we wanted to. One of the things I'm really excited about seeing as the game advances is actually the paleobotany, which is something that I really never managed to get into enough when we were working in. Oh my gosh, wait. Did it like resize everything? Because I don't think this plant's supposed to be that big. <laughs> Maybe it is? Let's see, if I grab this... I wonder if I set like the, the... the size expectations of all the plants to be huge now. Oh, look at that. Alright, we'll go ahead and... Can you align to surface right over here? Align to surface may not work yet, and that's fine. 
I think because I think we're still in a different modular group. Um, delete you. There we go. Oh, and I accidentally. Oh man. Okay, I'll figure it out eventually, on how you can like put down a bunch of plants. There's already mulch, so you can go ahead and make yourself a nice little garden. Monkey face orchids. Very pretty. Very pretty. We have a bunch of fox gloves. I like the way that you can just put down a variety really fast. Very nice. I kind of feel like painting with plants again. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves some lovely temperate plants. No, we're going to go all tropical, actually, because I'm in love with the tropical. And if I just want to get ourselves... Oh, look at those. You can't get too close to the paths while you're doing this, but... <laughs> and there goes our Nosoteratops! Check it out what these plants have got for them. And then we can like mix in a little group of those. I love it. Let's get the... Oh, so cool. All right, so now that I've gone ahead and I've played with all of those, let's get one of the chonkers that I know you guys are really waiting for. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a T-Rex. <laughs> now that I have Ood and Odd and Cood long enough, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get ourselves a little T-Rex. Let's see. I have to remember how to get there. That's the thing. Those are the incubation slots. And then open genetics lab. There we go. All right, so let's go to our T-Rex. There's the leather hide variety. Males are slightly brighter than females. And then we have got the molten variety. Look at that. Males showing off a brighter color to try to attract attention. <gasps> Feathered! Brumal variety with some feathers on our T-Rex. Yes, and the scorched variety. All right, let's grab some feathered T-Rexes. Big old feathered female. We're going to breed her up for like a million dollars and we are going to let uh, Togtega roam around. I want to rename her to like Big Girl or something. All right, let's go ahead and release her. Welcome, Big Girl. Look at her feathers! Today is a day absolutely all about feathers. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love her so much. Look at her roam through here. This is amazing! This is just so amazing! Oh, this makes her look the best. Oh, it's so cool. Oh my gosh. It's just a day of feathers. Okay, I love how you can even do like the rule of thirds. You can move around. That actually helps quite a bit to be able to have the rule of thirds to work with while you're trying to get like a good, a good picture. The light angle. Oh, look at that. Right into her beautiful face. I can practically count her pores. I did not think I was going to be spending my day counting the pores on a t like T-Rex. But there you go. Nice little fill of view change. She's beautiful. She's beauty and grace and everything I could have ever wished for. Ah, oh, big girl. Come here. Oh, I love you. I love her so much. I love her colors. I love her cheeks. I love her feathers. I want to add her into like my zoo crafting world forever so we can always remember big girl and because this is sandbox mode guys she's mostly just going to walk around considerately she is not going to be hungry enough to eat either guest or any of the dinosaurs roaming about never fear see big girl's a good girl she wouldn't try to eat all these people not right now she's full <laughs> The lighting is also so freaking beautiful. Just to be able to watch them roam around in this lighting is immensely satisfying. And I absolutely am a sucker for dinosaur pictures. But that's something I've really liked about the community around all of like Jurassic World Evolution and all of the other dinosaur games is that people really do seem to take some time to appreciate just when they look fantastic walking and moving around these worlds. But all right, guys, so we have big girl. We have got the shock of being able to literally shape the trees into the tree of life. Let's grab another tree of life and bring it back over here. We'll put it at the back so that we can have it a little closer, but it, not so close that like it casts everything in shadow permanently. I would like if you could like lighten up the shadow areas just a little bit so it wasn't quite so dark, but that's probably something you'll be able to adjust later. 
We have our little wetlands, and we haven't even looked at all the dinosaurs yet. This is fantastic. So, all right, if you guys could, do please go ahead and leave a like for all of our awesome dinos, be they micro raptors or big girl herself. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious and keep an eye on your T-Rex, because for just a moment I lost her and I was trying to figure out how on earth do you lose a T-Rex. There was a bit of panic, but we found big girl again. All right, stay curious, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.